Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 372. Prepare to embark on a journey with today's most inspiring entrepreneurs. Be bold, take risks, and conquer. Industry-leading bookmarking technology? I know. That's audiobooks.com. Seamlessly switch between devices without losing your place. You can even get your first book for free by going to audiobooks.com slash fire. Did you know you can engage Walker Corporate Law for licensing agreements, terms of service, and privacy policies, and even mergers and acquisitions? Plus, they specialize in working with entrepreneurs. Contact the founder, Scott at Walker Corporate Law. Dot com. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Alexis Neely. Alexis, are you prepared to ignite? I am ready to ignite, yes. Yes. Alexis, you may know her as Ali Shanti, is known as the truth-telling lawyer, the lawyer you love, and has even been called the hippie lawyer. She is internationally recognized as a leading entrepreneurial strategist, bringing forth a new economy paradigm for personal finance and business decisions. I've given Fire Nation just a little overview, Alexis, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you. Then give us an overview of your business. Fantastic. Thank you. Let me take you back to the beginning. My career started very traditionally. I graduated first in my class from Georgetown Law. I worked at one of the best firms in the United States. I started my own law practice, built it into a million dollar a year revenue generating business in just three years, which is really rare for a lawyer began training other lawyers on the new law business model they created to allow me to do that and was really on this very traditional traje- trajectory of uh, traditional success. Best-selling book, Today's Show, Good Morning America, O'Reilly Factor, Nancy Grace, gossiping about Michael Jackson and Tiger Woods until about 2009 when really I couldn't hold it all together. And this other disowned part of me, you've mentioned her already, Ali Shanti, yep. started appearing on the scene and she wanted to come out and play. And Alexis Neely did not want her to come out and play at all. Uh, and over the past several years, my journey has taken me into discovering how can I live with both of these parts of me, the very traditional, very uh, traditionally success-oriented Alexis Neely and the very non-traditional Ali Shanti. And that journey took me on a road of really letting go of everything. At that point in 2009, I had not just one business, but two businesses, uh, one training lawyers on this new law business model that I had created, and then a second business training entrepreneurs on new business model, new paradigm business models, and legal insurance, financial, and tax strategies. And so I, I, I let go of all of it. Not really. I don't know if you would have been able to tell that I let go of all of it, but I did. I fired my teams and I shrunk the businesses back to what they would be able to run with really just me running them without team support. And I stopped doing anything for the money. And I started to look at who would I be and how would I be in the world if money didn't matter? If I didn't have to feed a $2 million machine, if I wasn't trying to save up $40 million because that's what I had been led to believe financial freedom was all about. And instead, I was learning to be self-reliant, totally personally responsible. And along the way, what I discovered is that there's actually something much bigger than our traditional notions of success. Uh, I call it financial liberation, uh, creating a legacy, and... So today, I'm living as both Alexis Neely and Ali Shanti. The two businesses that I, in some ways, let go of um, have risen like phoenixes from the ashes, and they are back on track this year to do $2 million um, after really going down to just about nothing. During that time, I even filed bankruptcy and um, let go of my credit score. I'm actually writing a book about that now called You Are Not Your Credit Score and How to Use Credit and Debt Like the Rich to Build Your True Family Wealth. And um, 
uh, the, the businesses are back. Uh, I am uh, back and reemerging as both Alexis Neely and Ali Shanti, still training lawyers on this new law business model that I created, but from a whole different perspective. So now it's not just about helping these lawyers to make money and have happier clients, but how they can actually help their clients to leave a legacy of life that really matters not just for the right now, but, you know, to, to even save the planet. It's a big mission uh, to, to look at how we can help our clients to be environmentally aware and spiritually fulfilled and, um, and, and focus on social justice issues. Again, not just for now, but for, the, for, for seven generations to come. And now also working with entrepreneurs and those who want to be on a new paradigm way of making personal finance decisions that, again, is beyond these traditional notions of financial freedom and paying off debt and saving for retirement and on a new path of what I call financial liberation. Alexis, I am fascinated with your journey, and you truly are a phoenix who has risen from the ashes, and I can't wait to dive more into this because it is incredible how many listeners right now are resonating with you, and I am. I'm one of those because Mm -hmm. I was an officer in the U.S. Army, then I was in corporate America and corporate Mm -hmm. finance, and then I was in commercial real estate, and I was a different persona. I was a different person when I put my suit on or my uniform on and went to work than I really was authentically within myself. And I knew that. And it took me 32 years of my life to break out of that and to accept truly what my passions were, the kind of person and personality that I wanted to exude, not just on my free time, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I admire what you've done. I can't wait to share with Fire Nation more of that journey that you're embarked upon and continue to move forward in. But before we do, let's hear a success quote. You have an amazing success quote for us that's going to kind of break down your life mantra, and I'd love to hear it. Yeah, thank you. So this is a quote of my own, and it is, um, every conflict is our greatest opportunity to be more of who we really are. And I chose this quote because so many of us are in conflicts of one form or another. And we've been taught to handle them in certain ways, mostly around fighting, fighting for what's ours, fighting for what's right. And I believe that there's another way. And that that other way is that we begin to look at conflicts as actually a true test of who we really want to be in the world. And when we do that, for most of us, it doesn't involve fighting. It involves loving. It involves giving. It involves being more of who we really are. And when you're in conflict is your greatest opportunity to do it. And so I ask you to take this success quote in and recognize that whether it's a small conflict or a big one, you've probably got one in your life right now and ask yourself, Who do you really want to be? And let this conflict be the opportunity for you to be that. Wow. Great introspectives. And Alexis, I don't want to waste any more time. Entrepreneur on Fire is about your journey. You are our spotlighted guest today. So take us back to a time when you failed or when you faced a massive challenge or obstacle that you learned some incredible lessons from. Share with Fire Nation that story, the story of your choice and what lessons you did learn from that. Yeah, thank you. So there have been a lot uh, of these of these moments, these really turning point moments. Um, the biggest one most recently was, as I had mentioned earlier, back in 2009. Uh, companies were on track to do about $2 million that year. Uh, my team was in a lot of conflict. This Ali Shanti character was starting to emerge from me, and I was <laughs> writing <laughs> publicly on my blog, and uh, I was going to Burning Man and posting pictures of myself, and my team was saying to me, Alexis, you can't, you can't do that. You can't write that. You can't be that. You can't say that. And I knew that that wasn't true. But I didn't know how I could. Their, their message to me was, you'll hurt the business. And I remember I was sitting on the Nancy Grace soundstage. If you know of Nancy Grace, she's a popular TV personality, and she's just horrible, really. Um, she, <laughs> she's very abrasive. She's your traditional lawyer type, and she invites other lawyers on her show to come gossip about you know celebrities. And she had invited me on to gossip about Tiger Woods. He was going through his divorce, and uh, he had lied to his wife and cheated on her. And I was supposed to come on and talk about you know that his kids should be taken away from him for this horrible thing that he had done, and I couldn't do it. 
I got there after four hours of hair and makeup and traveled down to the studio and I'm sitting on the studio soundstage and looking at the camera, which was one of my favorite things to do. I love, love, love doing TV. And it hit me at that moment that I couldn't do it anymore, that I was contributing to the world negative 1,000 at most by going on national television to gossip about another human being when in fact I didn't think that things should even be handled the way that she said Tiger Woods had a need that wasn't being met. And so he chose to lie about it because that's what we're taught to do. We're we're taught to hide our desires rather than to just own them. And that's what he did. And instead, we're we're making him out to be wrong when really what we could have done is is shared more love and recognized the need that he had that wasn't being met. And how could I possibly convey this in the two minutes or 30 seconds maybe that I was given on the Nancy Grace show? And I decided at that moment that I would not do TV ever again until I could do transformational TV, that I wouldn't go on television to gossip about other humans unless it was somehow positive and giving people a new model of what's possible, what I now recognize as the modern family values. And so I didn't. I stopped doing TV. In fact, I moved out of Los Angeles. I moved to Colorado, where I live now, and I began to create a new life for myself and my children that was just the beginning. I ended up giving up my my fancy car. Uh, I moved into a 5,300-square-foot house here on a lake. Ended up moving out of that onto a farm with my children um, so that I could get back to what was true, so that I could discover what was actually real. And I think, as I might have mentioned a little bit earlier, I let go of everything. I let go of my reputation. I let go of my image. I let go of my personal assistant and the person who cooked for me and the person who cleaned for me. And I went to live in this little two-bedroom farmhouse with my children about 45 minutes outside of Boulder so that I I could get to a point where I didn't need money because my entire life I had spent escaping the fear, running from the fear of running out of money. I built these million dollar businesses because I was afraid and I was pushed by fear rather than being pulled by desire. So I had to get to a place where I could discover what is my true desire? Who am I really? And I had to let go of everything, everything that I held near and dear in order to do that. And many people would look at that and call it a failure. You failed. You dropped out. You let go of the the trajectory of success that you were on. John, it was the very best thing that I ever could have done. Because from that place, I could rebuild on a foundation of bedrock that was real and true. And that's what I did. And from that place, I came back to who am I really? What do I really want to do? And how do I really want to be in the world? I stopped taking on private clients completely and discovered that I actually do love serving lawyers because I considered stopping serving lawyers. Um, But I, I realized that I actually do love serving lawyers. I love helping them see a new way of being with their clients. I love helping them realize the bigger mission of their lives. and that I don't just want to be an internet marketer selling information products, but instead making a real impact on the way people make personal finance decisions and helping them to not be afraid. Helping, and and I could only, by the way, do that by going there myself, by letting go of it all and having to live a cash lifestyle, not having access to all the credit that I had access to, and going into the grocery store with only $100 and saying, okay, this is all I can spend today because that's all I have. I had to be willing to go there. So go there I did. And from that place, I recognized and realized that I could never actually run out of money because it's not the money that keeps things moving forward. It's the value that I provide in the world. And I recognize that the value I provide is based on my creativity, my relationships, and my resourcefulness. And I don't have to hoard money ever. I don't have to have access to credit at all times, although it is nice to have access (laughs) to credit. I do recommend it if you have a good credit score that you do access credit. And that if you don't, that you don't work your entire life to pay off your debt, but instead find the freedom in recognizing that your wealth comes not from money in the bank. It comes from creativity relationships, and resourcefulness. And that's what I discovered during this time is that I'll always have enough because I have those, those three things. So my failure, my willingness to let go and go to rock bottom with 
no, nothing and no one. And I had to do my own laundry and do my own grocery shopping and cook for my kids and run my own businesses on my own without having all of these structures that I'd put in place because that's what success meant. Recognizing that I can do it. And that means that you can do it too. And you have creativity. You have relationships and you have resourcefulness. And if you feel like you don't, then I say focus all your energy and attention on discovering those three things rather than figuring out how you can make enough money just to pay your bills because that's never going to lead to a life on fire. Alexis, you shared way too many incredible insights for me to highlight (laughs) all of them right now. And I know the Fire Nation is just going to go back and re-listen to this, maybe even a couple times, because it is such an incredible journey that you've been through and you share it so eloquently. But one thing I do want to highlight, one phrase that you said that really resonated with me is, I was pushed by fear rather than pulled by desire. And I just want to ask the listeners right now, I want to ask Fire Nation, are you being pushed by fear or are you being pulled by desire? And if you are right now being pushed by fear, would you rather be being pulled by desire? And if the answer is yes, then start taking action now. There's no time like the present. There's no need to wait to start to be pulled by desire. Alexis did it. And Alexis, just boil it down for Fire Nation into one sentence because you gave some incredible stuff. But in just one sentence, share with us one takeaway that you can really pull from that entire experience. Dive into the thing that you are most afraid of. Whatever it is that you're avoiding, look at how you can embrace it, confront it, face it, bring it in, ask for more of it. And on the other side of it is where you find all of the freedom that you want. I love that, Alexis. And what I really want to do now is move to the other end of the spectrum. You just share with us some challenges, some obstacles that you've overcome, some failures that you've had in your life. And the aha moments that did come from that. But I want you to take us to another point in your journey when you just had this light bulb that went off, when you had this aha moment. Share with us that story and the steps that you took to turn that into reality. So it's actually, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a couple of different aha moments. Um, yeah, the, 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 first, the first one is, uh, this is after I had I'd, I'd started the process of letting go of everything, but I was still holding on. It was kind of like, imagine, imagine me holding on by the tips of my fingernails and I'm hanging there and I'm just like oh, trying so hard to hold it all together. Oh, imagery, and, I love it. Yeah. So there I am like on the side of this mountain or cliff and I'm holding on by my fingernails and I had hired this guy as an interim CEO to come into my company and what he did is he basically took my overhead down from 80,000 a month to 20,000 a month so that I could run the company without this massive team and uh, I, I remember I was standing at a gas station and I was talking to him about the, my financial situation and how scared I was to just let go, to let go of the cliff, to let go of the, you know, holding it all together. And what I was most afraid of is that nobody was going to like me anymore. And, and I said it to him just very plainly like that. I said, Hitch, his name is Hitch. I said, Hitch, nobody's going to like me anymore. If I can't, if I can't pay you, if I can't hire people to help me, I'm not going to have the support I need. And he said, he said, Lex, he called me Lex. He said, Lex, you need to just let go. Stop making money. It's going to be okay. Everybody loves you. Everybody likes you. And you're going to have the support you need. And I said, okay, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to let go. And that was a big letting go moment for me. And then from that place, I did it. And I, by the way, I still had lots of friends and lots of people who loved me, which was a big shock to me. Um, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it really was. And I, I should, be, to be honest, there were people who left my life. Yeah. There were people that were just hanging around for the money, for the fame, for the traditional notions of success. And it was beautiful to actually see them go and recognize, oh, those weren't my friends to begin with. Um, so it was great to get in the right relationship with reality. But from that place, I said, how will I know true success? How will I know true success? Because I've had this traditional success, but how will I know true success when I experience it? And I said, when I when I'm dancing on stage. Now, this is very weird for me to say because I was this very traditional right right brain or left brain, um, left brain logical thinker, lawyer, not very much in my body, very much in my head, not very sexy. I wouldn't have considered myself sexy. But when I could dance on stage and perform as a dancer, then I would know success. 
Now, it was very strange for me to even think that. And yet there was this part of me that said that is what success will be. Well, just this past week at Burning Man, I had that dream come true. And I did a performance on stage at our camp. There was a, a performance that seven, seven women did. And, and I had 90 seconds on stage to do my own dance performance. And it happened. I did it. I was in my body fully on stage. And it was true success for me. It's not traditional. It won't buy me any, you know, safety or uh, security or retirement. Um, and yet it felt like success in my body. It felt incredible to be um, fully present and to be able to perform in that way. And so really the biggest aha and, and the, the, the success that comes from that that I can share with those of you that are listening is to find what success means for you beyond the traditional notions of success beyond the traditional ways that our parents passed on what success means, no matter how strange it is, ask yourself right now, what, what would I feel like when I'm really, truly successful? What will it feel like? What will I be doing? And for me, it's dancing on stage because if my life is set up in such a way that I can dance, do a sexy dance on stage, then I know that my whole life is good. It means I'm in my body. It means I'm feeling good about who I am. It means I'm around the type of people that can receive that part of me. And that means that my life overall is extremely successful. Wow, Alexis, you are the 373rd episode of Entrepreneur on Fire. And I have Fire Nation faithful who never miss an episode. So they know without a doubt that I've only said this one time before in 373 episodes, but you have honestly given me the chills. You've given me goosebumps. And I just want to thank you for that because it's heartwarming. It's inspiring to hear everything that you're sharing right now. And I really want to bring everything to the present because that's what we're doing. We're moving to the present and Burning Man was very recent and that great success was very recent for you. Share with Fire Nation the present times right now. What is one thing that's just really exciting you, inspiring you, making you passionate mm -hmm. right now? What kept coming through at Burning Man is, uh, and by the way, if you haven't if you haven't gone, it's an amazing place to get in contact with what's real and true for you. At least it is for me. And what kept coming through this past week is that my life is about creating legacy, and it's about making creating legacy accessible for everyone, so that nobody, no single person, needs to be focused on just paying their bills to get by, because that's not going to create a legacy. No single person needs to just like get up, go to work, come home, watch TV, go to sleep, get up, go to work, come home, watch TV, and think that that's what makes a life. And instead, that every person can be have their, their basic needs satisfied enough so that we can focus not on just the right now, although of course, Focusing on the present moment is absolutely important, but also paradoxically focusing on how what you're doing today impacts not just your children or your grandchildren, but seven generations into the future, because we've got some significant choices to make. We've got some, we're, we're at a turning point right now. And so how will you participate in this great turning? And my contribution is helping you to break free of the old, outdated paradigms that are keeping all of us stuck, the money decisions that we make that keep us stuck, the family decisions that we make and keep us stuck, and instead find a new way, a new way to be in the world where, again, we're not focusing on paying off our debt, saving for retirement and paying our bills, but instead having true financial liberation right now, where we're no longer engaged in the kind of conflict that is about who's right and who's wrong, but instead finding a way for all of us to win so that we can truly live a win-win-win paradigm and recognizing we don't need to hoard resources, that we can share what we have, we can give more than we ever thought possible. And through that, truly, truly, truly love our lives because we recognize that our lives matter and what we're doing does make a difference every day. And I believe that that's actually what brings people to true joy and true expressions of freedom and the success that just cannot be replicated by 
these traditional ideas of success that when we realize them, and I think that you've had this experience as well from what I heard of your story, it's empty. And when you're truly living life and leaving a legacy every day, not just in the books that you write, but how you are with the people in your life, your life matters. It feels great. And success isn't empty. It is full and you feel fulfilled. And that is really what I'm about today is how can I help you have more of that? Alexis, it's living the life of abundance that I've come to that's been so powerful. And it's what you're talking about right now is speaking to my core. And I know it's resonating with so many of the listeners right now. So again, just thank you for sharing from within, for sharing everything that you've been through, the experience and what that's brought you to on this journey that you very admittedly are still on. And it's this ever changing, ever growing, ever experiencing journey. So incredible stuff, Alexis. And we're going to take a minute right now to thank our sponsors. I've worked for some pretty huge corporations in my time, and man, did their legal departments stink. They were always so busy, they never even had a chance to get to know the types of people or circumstances they were working with. It was all so robotic. That is not the case with Walker Corporate Law. Walker Corporate Law is a boutique corporate law firm who has created a new business model designed specifically for entrepreneurs and startups looking for an alternative to the big law firms. Their mission, to protect entrepreneurs and to help them succeed. They exist so that you have someone looking out for you and your business. They also provide a broad range of corporate legal services, from idea to exit. They have you covered from mergers and acquisitions to licensing agreements, all the way to service and privacy policies. If you're looking to skip the huge law firm but still ensure you're protected, then contact the founder, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com today. That's scott at walkercorporatelaw.com. What a revolutionary concept, audiobooks. Imagine what our car rides and workouts would be like without audio content. Seriously, how do we ever go on runs with our Walkman and CD players bulking up our pockets or drive from point A to point B without hooking up our MP3 players to our car dashboards? I am so glad I don't have to think about that anymore, especially now that I have audiobooks.com. Audiobooks.com allows you to listen to your favorite titles instantly, anywhere. You can choose from more than 40,000 books, and I know you have a growing list of business books you've been meaning to dive into. With their industry-leading bookmarking technology, you can seamlessly switch between devices without losing your place. Make sure you're getting the titles you really care about. Audiobooks offers free sampling so you can preview as many books as you like even before you sign up. Get your first book for free today by going to audiobooks.com slash fire. Okay, now it's time to enter my favorite part of the show. This is the lightning round, Alexis. This is where I get to ask you a series of questions. You come back at us, Fire Nation style, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? I got it. I'm ready. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? I had no idea how to be an entrepreneur. And my dad was an entrepreneur, and I thought that that was a bad thing because it seemed like he was always on this up-and-down roller coaster. So it was really fear, not knowing where I would find the financial resources to make the leap from a very steady six-figure paycheck at a big law firm into my own law practice. And I was afraid, pure and simple. What is the best advice you've ever received? Build your business from where you want to be, not from where you are now. So every decision you make in your business is based on where you see yourself going not where you are at this very moment. Alexis, can you share one of your personal habits that you believe attributes to your success? Every moment I'm tapping into my desire. I'm asking myself, Alexis, what do you actually truly want right now? Alexis, do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with you can share with our listeners? The best internet resource that I found recently is called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. And while I don't use it all the time, when I do, uh, it's it's great. And I use it just to track who I've assigned things to um, because I'm not the best uh, at following up with people after I've delegated something. So Trello has been extremely useful for that. Nice. Well, Fire Nation, you know that you can find the links to this resource 
and everything that's been mentioned in today's episode by going to eofire.com slash Alexis Neely. Alexis, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? So this is going to be a book that's unusual. Um, I expected nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it, It really shifted things for me a lot. It's called The Fifth Sacred Thing. And it's written by a woman named Starhawk. And it's a novel. It tells the story of the future and uh, the possibility of building a world that uh, where there's enough for everyone, enough food, enough water, enough love. And it does it in a way where there's lots of conflict. Uh, it's fully dramatized. You're going to love it if you love uh, novels of suspense and action. And uh, it has created the template of possibility for me that I can see creating in this world as well. So it's called The Fifth Sacred Thing, and it's by Starhawk. Wow. Well, Fire Nation, if you haven't already, and I know that you love audio, you can get the audio version of this book for free at eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. And Alexis, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? In the next seven days, I would immediately identify the people who are doing work in this world that is important to me, and I would meet them and ask them how I could support them. And I would start off rebuilding my life from the role of a supporter. Uh, I teach about these entrepreneurial archetypes. And I believe that all of us can be entrepreneurs as long as we are uh, uh, structuring our life and our work and how we price and package and all these things within the right context for our archetype and where we are now and where we want to go. And so my recommendation for anybody first starting out in an entrepreneurial endeavor if they've not yet worked in the field, if they don't know anybody, it's all about relationships. And the best way to develop those relationships is by starting as a supporter. So that's what I would do. I would start as a supporter for the people that I could identify in that first seven days as doing the most important work in my world. Alexis, I have immensely enjoyed hearing your journey, hearing all of your insights, and I can't wait to see where you continue to take this passion and this inspiration in the future. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance. Share the best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Fantastic. I'm actually going to give you something of a few hundred dollar value. So um, best place that I find for people to begin on their journey of finding what's actually real and true for them is by getting beyond this idea of having to make a certain amount of money. And this was really transformational for me when, again, remember I had these $2 million businesses that I was trapped by and I could feel something else wanting to emerge. But how could I let that thing emerge when I I had to make this money? I was trapped by this idea of having to make this certain amount of money. So I created something for myself that um, I now call the money map to freedom. And it's a process that I'm giving you the truth telling modules of the money map to freedom. And when you go through these truth telling modules, they're going to help you to look at what do you actually truly want? Like what do you really, 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 really want? What will it cost for you to have that? Not $40 million, but actually at four levels, minimum to be happy preferred if you could afford it, no limits and now so that you can get in right relationship with how much money do you actually need to have the life that you really want and how much time are you willing to put into that life and then through that you're going to create what I call your money map number. It's the number that you're working towards right now so that you can incrementally keep taking the next steps in your life of letting the truth of who you really are evolve and let you be an entrepreneur along the way. Even if you work for somebody else, you can still do it entrepreneurially, which provides you with a lot more freedom and ultimately what I call sovereignty. And that's you being independent and not relying on anybody else and doing it in a way that's actually interdependent, which is the next evolution. Too much to go into right now. But 
I'm going to give you this tool. It's um, called the Money Map to Freedom Truth Telling Modules. Normally sells for like four or five hundred dollars. You're going to get it free by going to moneymaptofreedom dot com forward slash truth. T r u t h the word truth. Moneymaptofreedom dot com forward slash truth. When you get there, you'll enter in the code free tool. Uh, and when you enter in that code free tool, you're going to receive the first two modules of uh, the Money Map to Freedom Truth Telling. And you'll also, I believe, have 30 days in our Eyes Wide Open Evolution Circle where you can actually come on in and talk with me about your personal situation. You come in our private Facebook group and let me know what's going on with you and your life so that I can help you reframe and reshift or shift maybe for the first time the path that you're on so that you can get on the path that's going to lead you to the life that you actually truly want, a life of desire rather than fear, allowing all parts of you to come online, nothing be disowned or left behind, and uh, experience the joy and the true success that you've heard me talk about today. Wow, how generous is that, Fire Nation? And as you know, you are going to be able to find the links to everything that Alexis has talked about, the resource, the book, her contact information, the link to moneymaptofreedom.com slash truth, keyword free tool. That will all be on the show notes page at eofire.com. Just type in the search bar the word Alexis. It'll take you to her show notes page. Or just go directly to moneymaptofreedom.com slash truth. Remember, that keyword is free tool. Alexis, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Fire Nation. Entrepreneur on Fire generates over 400,000 unique downloads a month and well over five figures in monthly revenue. This is all a result of the podcast I started on September 22nd, 2012. If you want to find out everything I've done, come to podcastersparadise.com. Here you will find video tutorials of everything you need to create, grow, and monetize your podcast. A community of other podcasters to exchange reviews, ideas, and experiences with, and access to private webinars where today's top experts reveal all. Come to podcastersparadise.com to find out more. Thank you so much for joining us today on Entrepreneur on Fire. Head on over to eofire.com for full recaps of every show, our amazing blog articles and resources, and just plain fun. Your entrepreneurial journey awaits, so prepare to ignite. 